it was like this this was not here it was totally different and I got I got nauseous and uh, then I started hearing a whisper from this side and I was I was trying to whisper I, I tried trying to hear her trying and I could hear you guys talking and I couldn't hear her you stopped talking and I heard her I can't get her I can't get her help me Set up the DVR, then we get the witnesses straight, and then off we go for some ghost hunting. Maybe some clam chowder. Hey! The Five Fishermen Restaurant in Halifax, Nova Scotia is best known for its fine cuisine. However, it's also well known as a hot spot of alleged paranormal activity, activity that's often associated with the building's rich history. In 1912, when the Titanic sank, many of the bodies that were recovered were brought to a funeral home that was connected to the building. Several years later, in 1917, Halifax was devastated by the explosion of a munition ship in the harbor. Thousands died, and many of the victims were brought to the funeral home in preparation for their eventual burial. Many people theorize that the victims of these terrible disasters are somehow linked to the paranormal activity that's been reported over the years at the Five Fishermen Restaurant. Holly and I arrived at the Five Fishermen around closing time and prepared to spend the entire evening there. Inside, we were greeted by Leonard Curry and Sandy Gardner, two longtime employees of the restaurant. Leonard was the first to tell us his story. I've had many odd experiences, but I suppose uh, the strangest one uh, happened to me when I first started working here. Um, I didn't know about the history or the reputation of the building, um, and on this particular day, I came in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon to uh, set up the salad bar. Um, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I would be the only person in the dining room. We opened at 5 o'clock. Um, and so I'd go about picking uh, items for the salad bar across the uh, main room in front of the bar. And as I was passing by on one of my uh, trips, I'd heard a crash come from behind me. So I uh, it came from behind the bar area here, um, proceeded up here, and at uh, that time this room was a smoking section. There was a stack of ashtrays here and one was lying on the floor which I thought was odd but obviously had fallen off. So I bent down to pick it up and when I stood up I was looking in this mirror and in this mirror I could see a man walking down past his tables. I, it happened so fast but what I remember thinking was he's wearing something that's from a different time. So uh, I never said anything about it but a few years after that um, there was an assistant manager that was uh, at the salad bar and he was talking on the phone and again it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon and he was the only person in the dining room. And at one point he saw a man standing on the landing and he said, excuse me sir, I'll be right with you. He finished his conversation and went to find this gentleman and see what he wanted. There was nobody there. He went down to the foyer and the foyer was empty and he checked the door. The door was locked so there was no way anybody could come in. And he was telling me about this experience later on that evening when we were working together. And it was the first time I told anybody about what happened to me and the description of the guy matched in terms of what we remember him wearing and the fact that he had this long white hair. Leonard's description of the white-haired gentleman made me think that perhaps he had had something to do with the funeral home. With the detailing in the long black coat, maybe he was an employee or even the owner. Whoever he was, he was not alone. Sandy spoke of her experiences here, and they were of another entity altogether. I uh, was closing the restaurant one evening and as a supervisor we're supposed to check the washrooms and make sure that there is nobody left lingering. Turned the corner in the washroom and I opened the door and I saw a little girl standing there. She pleaded with me with her eyes. Her eyes stayed with me and they still stay with me. I can still see her eyes and she was a very unhappy young lady. 
I was quite upset by it because she really did seem very, very unhappy. By the look in her eyes, she had been trying for a long time to communicate with somebody, and it just happened to be she had gotten up enough energy to show herself, and I happened to be the one she showed herself to. I don't think it was specifically me that she needed to speak to, but she, she definitely needed to communicate with somebody, and I happened to be there. There were certainly lots of reports of paranormal activity at the Five Fishermen. The most compelling ones were the story of the white-haired man who had been seen in the dining area and around the salad bar, and the sightings of the sad little girl in the ladies' washroom. Holly and I decided to place our infrared cameras in the dining room overlooking the mirror and the salad bar. We also ran one camera upstairs into the ladies' washroom. On this occasion, we also had a thermal camera with us and, of course, our digital audio recorders. After we finished setting up our infrared cameras, our next order of business was to set up a trigger item in the salad bar. All right, so. So what we have here is a trigger object because part of the story of the five fishermen is that the ghosts might be from the Halifax explosion of 1917 or the Titanic disaster of 1912. So something in the early 20th century, we've got a, uh, an original photo from that time period of a steamship, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, and what we're going to do is we're going to place it in the salad bar, <laughs> which sounds strange, but uh, this is an area where apparently a lot of paranormal activity has taken place. So we're going to place it in here. We're going to mark it with some tape. Oops. And uh, not only from the time period, but was actually on a wall in a house in Halifax during the Halifax explosion. So hopefully when we come back, even if the, uh, the ghosts don't come talk to us, they can make their presence known by moving this painting, which hopefully will still be here because it's a very valuable painting, so, or, or kudos, picture. Kudos. Yeah. Sorry, I just want to make sure it's lined up along the edges. Like that. There we go. So we're just going to leave this here for whatever spirits might be dwelling in the five fishermen. So we'll see what happens. Once we had finished setting up the picture as the trigger item, we asked Sandy to show us up to the ladies' washroom where she had seen the little girl. So this is the upstairs bathroom. And so we're on our way to the ladies' washroom where the night that I was closing and saw the apparition, I had opened the door and so when I made sure that there was nobody left in the building, as I turned the corner, there was a young girl standing right here. And how long did you say you had seen her for? I think it was just seconds, but it was her eyes that I focused on. And she looked the at most, you. and she did definitely look at me, and without question. After you saw her for several minutes, she several seconds. Seconds, she dissipated. She did. She Before did. your eyes, you saw her disappear. Um, I think I might have shut my eyes and opened Please. my eyes again, and she was gone. She was gone. I don't remember seeing light dissipate, but there was light around her when I had first seen her. And there was a um, a shimmering sort of glow of some sort of blue glow or something around her. Or was Not it a white blue, glow? It was white. White. It was white. There was, it was colorless. After hearing Sandy's story, Holly and I decided to spend some time investigating the ladies' washroom. We're interested in learning about you. So, if you wish, take the opportunity, say hello in whatever way you see fit. Provided you're friendly. Nice. Nice claws. Well, it's the lawyer in me. I just want to make sure that, <laughs> you know, we've covered all the angles. And it didn't take long for something unusual to happen. Okay, that was weird. I don't even know what that was. I seriously don't know what that was. That was odd. That was, um... The handles on the door are hot. When Ghost Cases returns, Paul and I continue our investigation at the Five Fishermen Restaurant. Perhaps not unusual to find in a bathroom, not a woman's all. bathroom. But, here's the thing.
continue our investigation at the Five Fisherman Restaurant. So what we were doing is Holly and I were sitting up here in the ladies' bathroom where the, I know it sounds strange, but where Sandy um, some time ago saw a small young child sitting right where we're sitting now. She came around and saw it here. And so we hung out here for about yeah. half an hour and we had the uh, tape recorder going and we'll see what kind of audio phenomenon we might have picked up on that. We had the uh, thermal cam going, all sorts of stuff. And we're just sitting there, not even talking. And all of a sudden, we hear what sounds like a, a penny I dropping. A penny first, I thought it was yeah. a penny I thought it was a coin. Um, and it came from over here. Absolutely no question, right over here. Um, and so there was nothing on top of the counter here. Completely Sorry, flat, as now. you can see. But, the yeah. only thing I can think of is that if there was something, I thought maybe there was an yeah. indentation in the wood down but here. But there isn't. It's completely flat, if yep. you can actually get down there and see that. Yeah. Um, and, and the other thought I had, just by looking, you've got the copper piping. So perhaps if it had slid down the edge here some might time been, ago, might it have been could on the have slipped pepper. off, but, but... Here's where we were, and... Uh, you got that? I got a... So when I investigated underneath, I did find this, which is a button from what I suspect is a woman's coat. Perhaps not unusual to find in a bathroom, not woman's bathroom. But here's the thing. It was directly right under the middle of this. So how did it, if it fell, where did it fall it from? It didn't roll. The there only was no place, audible rolling. The only place it could have fallen from was from somehow this, this copper pipe here. So here's, you know, here's where it would, here's how it would have gone down, like that. But that's not where it was. It was, even if it was right here. It still rolls. And that is possibly what we heard because now if you put it there, it's more or less, it was, it was like some form of coinage. Where's that button? Uh, oh, there it is. Ah, it's got me. Uh oh, well, it's really, cute, that's cute. It's really dirty under there. Things I do for science. <laughs> that's my good suit. Ew, <laughs> penny. Oops. Okay, try Preferably that one again. button not dropping on the money. Oh, that one sounded different even altogether. Yeah, but still, like, see how it bounces? Did you hear that? It's hollow. Half an hour into the investigation, and we had already had something happen. But a thorough search of the area revealed a probable explanation in the form of a button from a lady's coat. However, the fact that it fell at the time it did is certainly a coincidence at the very least and perhaps represented something even stranger. We concluded our investigation of the ladies washroom and then moved to the dining room area. We sat down directly under the mirror where Leonard had seen the apparition of a white-haired man. After about an hour in the dining room with nothing out of the ordinary happening, Paul and I decided to conclude the investigation. We went back to check on the trigger item which sadly hadn't moved. It was getting late, probably about 3 a.m. in the morning, so we thought we'd wrap it up for the night. We were pretty happy with what we had thought had been a very interesting evening. However, it wasn't until we got back and were reviewing the footage and the evidence that we were surprised at how much was really going on around us that night. One piece of evidence that was recorded by our infrared cameras overlooking the salad bar caught our attention. We're always careful when reporting DVR evidence. In most cases, light anomalies can be explained by dust or insects reflecting off the infrared light. In this case, however, the light anomaly is an unusual shape and size and follows a path around the salad bar that one could imagine a human being, or in this case, possibly a spirit, might follow. Watch for a seemingly transparent shadow that appears at the left side of the screen, and then follow it as the shadow passes by the trigger item and becomes more visible just before it disappears off camera at the right of the screen. Could this have been a curious spirit examining the picture of the ship? We don't know, but perhaps our trigger item worked better than we first thought. Our digital audio recording devices also picked up a strange and anomalous piece of evidence as Holly and I were beginning our investigation of the ladies' washroom, just prior to the button dropping on the floor. As Holly and I listened to the clip a few days later, we heard something that sounded to us very much like a distraught young child, which fit with the story that Sandy had told of the little girl in the ladies' washroom. 
There were no children in the building with us that evening, which leaves the question of how our audio recorders picked up what seems to be the voice or the cry of a small child. Holly and I had some very interesting experiences during our visit to the five fishermen. The object that dropped in the bathroom, the anomaly that appeared in the DVR footage at the salad bar, and the audio evidence that sounded similar to a crying child. It was this last piece of evidence, the recorded cry of the small child in the washroom, that I found both compelling and also extremely disturbing. We decided to return on another day with Kelly Muse, a local psychic and spiritual healer with whom we had worked before. I was interested to see what she might sense about the building. We showed Kelly to the third floor where Sandy had seen the little girl. We wanted to give Kelly a chance to explore the space on her own, so we decided to split up. Paul offered to go sit in the girls' washroom alone, go figure, and I decided to go back down to the dining room. I got curious though, and I decided to come back up to see how Kelly was doing, and I was glad I did. She had been able to sense the spirit of a woman in the hallway, who she felt was forcibly being separated from her daughter by another spirit. And uh, Bridget told me she had felt something on the steps, and I, I, I was walking and I stopped, and I went toward the chair, and I, I felt an overwhelming feeling of dizziness. It was like, I'm like, okay, something's wrong here. I sat there, and it was like I spaced out, totally spaced out. It, it was like this, this was not here. It was totally different. And I got, I got nauseous, and uh, then I started hearing a whisper from this side. And I was, I was trying to whisper, I, I tried, tried to hear her, trying, and I could hear you guys talking, and I couldn't hear her. You stopped talking. And I heard her, I can't get her, I can't get her, help me. It's a male, and he, it, it, his face is half gone. I don't know who he is. I had never seen Kelly this distraught before. She was obviously having an intense emotional experience. So I asked her what we needed to do next. I only know one way to help, and it's what I know. We, I have my holy water, and we have to cleanse this place, absolutely, and send whatever's there away so she can come get her. Why, why would, why would he be keeping her here? Because he's by himself. He does not want to be by himself. And she's afraid. Okay. He doesn't want her to go. So what do you? So we have to send him away. We have to make him go so he, he's away from her. When Ghost Cases returns, Kelly tries to free the spirit of a little girl trapped in the Five Fisherman restaurant. Is my arm supposed to hurt? Yep. Oh, okay, good. <laughs>
I want you to go to the light. Say it. Mm. Go to the light. Okay. Say, I want you to go to the light. I want you to go to the light. This is what ghost investigating is, I've discovered on my journey. A lot of just sitting for minutes, you know, hours even, <clears throat> with nothing happening. And then you get that one moment when something happens that changes the way you perceive your reality and the things around you and the world that we live in. Arm is tingling. Yep. My right arm is tingling. Yep, he's going. He's turning. I don't know if I've had that moment, but I've had a couple of moments that were um, genuinely weird. And uh, one of them happened in here, which is why we're back trying to recreate it. Mm, my arm is numb. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Go towards the light. Okay, he's going. Mm -hmm. You could be here for an hour or two or three and have nothing happen. Nothing might ever happen. But when something does happen, that's what makes this all sort of worthwhile. Interesting. Is my arm supposed to hurt? Yep. Oh, okay, good. I feel the air different here. Having completed the cleansing ritual, Kelly and I explained to Paul what had happened, and I decided to mention the strange physical experience I'd had. All right, so, um, and I know you, you take no offense when I say I'm skeptical just in general okay. of all of this, but you, this, this is interesting. Not, uh, arm physical signs that you can actually feel. Your arm went numb and your, your head started to well, we first, tingle? Well, we were first in the space and Kelly was asking if I felt anything, um, yeah. which, <laughs> and, um, and I was like, no, and she's like, can you see anything? Do you see anything? I'm like, no, I'm not getting anything. I'm like, like this part of my head is kind mm -hmm. of tingly and that's lasted for a little while. Yes. Um, and actually got a little bit stronger as she was trying to cleanse the space. And then as we backed out of the, the bathroom, and uh, she was uh, she was doing her cleansing and trying to get me to imagine them going into the light, which I was having a hard time focusing on. That's for whatever reason. My imagination's pretty good, but um, then my hand started to tingle. Um, my right hand, and then it started to get heavy and start to go numb. And in some ways, I can still feel it. It's not as strong as it was. And I said, to <laughs> "Sorry, that's strange." <laughs> so I said, "Okay, Kelly, my arms." starting to go numb. Is that normal? She's like, okay, you need to start saying these words, which was to go into the light, which again, fun. And uh, she then later informed me, I was like, okay, so what's going on? Why are my hands heavy? And she's like, oh, he's just holding on to you. Yeah. Over the next hour, I observed the spiritual cleansing ritual that Kelly started in the ladies' washroom. Tell them to go to the light. Go to the light. We're safe. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I want you to go cross over to being surrounded by the light. Did you hear that? There they go. I observed no visible signs that led me to believe that a spirit was cleansed that evening. However, I don't completely discount the experience that Holly and I shared in the ladies' washroom nor can I discount Holly's experiences with Kelly earlier in the evening, or the myriad stories told over the years by the people who work at the Five Fishermen. If in fact the spirit of a little girl was trapped in the ladies' washroom at the Five Fishermen restaurant, all that I can say is that I genuinely hope Kelly was successful in her efforts to show her a path to a place that offered the little girl the peace I can only imagine she was longing for.